So let's start with our warm ups and see where we go from there. So feet hip width apart, toes straight ahead, spread those toes out, no gripping. Get your core activated with your ribs toward your spine and up, sitting bones down, keeping that hip area open. Shoulders back and down a couple of times to release and relax that upper body. And just let your arms hang in your sides. Focus inward, bring that attention in with your breath. Exhale, stress and tension. And let's begin. Inhale, arms to shoulder level, stretch the fingertips out. Hands to your heart, elbows slightly back, keeping your heart open. Inhale, excuse me, out to the front, and then clasp your hands behind you. Press your hands toward the floor and your heart toward the ceiling as you stretch your head back and get that upper body in a nice back bend. Head it over and deepen as much as you'd like into that forward position. Move your chin around, again, releasing the neck shoulder area. Knees bent slightly. Work your way back up. From the bottom of the spine, winding all the way back to the top, and another back bend. Shoulders down, head stretching away, but don't lift your chin too much. Want to keep that back of the neck stretching. And then inhale upright, release your arms, and take a moment to focus on how that feels internally for you. And same thing, we're reaching out at shoulder level. Hands to your heart, stretch out to the front, shoulders still down, and then hands behind, clasping the opposite way, so other finger outside. And again, stretch into the back bend, lengthening the whole spine, pivot over, and just let the top of the head go down toward the floor as much as it will, hands up toward the ceiling. Take a breath or two there, and then bending your knees, push the sitting bones slightly down as you wind back all the way to the top. And again, another upper body back bend, lifting your heart. Shoulders, shoulder blades always toward your waist. And then inhale back upright, releasing into that pose. Just take a moment, noticing how your body is warming up. And we'll do those side stretches. So bring your arms out, shoulder level, palms toward the ceiling, hands above your shoulders. Clasp them, bring your arms back by your ears, and sitting bones down, shoulders down. Keep the body facing front as you lean to the side, pushing your foot, you're leaning away from deeper, getting those openings through the ribs. Take a breath, don't lean forward. Stretch out. And then inhale back upright. Keep your shoulders down and switch your other hand to the front. Again, pull your arms by your ears. Stretch your head up. Lean to the side. No twist. Getting those ribs opening. Push the foot down. Spread the toes out. Don't forget to breathe. And then inhale to the top. And release. And again, take a moment there, just feeling how those side areas are more open. Spread your toes, shoulders down, arms again at shoulder level, palms toward the ceiling, hands above your shoulders. Clasp your elbows, we're going to do our twists, so remember, sitting bones down and base of the skull up. Stretch those bones apart so they can twist. Exhale, turning to one side. Take a breath, pivot over in your twist. Keep the weight on both feet as much evenly as you can. And keep your arms by your ears, pulling your body toward your leg as much as you like. Lift your sitting bones, stretch those legs. And then slowly work your way back up in the twist into that upper body for your back. And shoulders down, elbows back, and don't forget to burn. And then inhale upright, exhale around to the center, switch your arms around. And again, lengthen the spine and exhale to the opposite side. 
take a breath pivot over in your twist and again just deepen as much as you'd like relaxing keep the weight on both feet as much as you can keep your arms by your ears pull your body in towards your legs stretch those sitting bones up keep those legs stretching apart and then inhale coming back all the way up shoulders down elbows back and don't forget to breathe so upper body back bend while you're twisting inhale to the top exhale around to the center bring your arms up pull your shoulders down extended mountain clasp your hands steeple your fingers lift your heart and look overhead so lift your heart a little bit more, pull your shoulders down, push your hands and your head slightly back. Come back upright, switch your hands so the other clasp is in front. And again, pull back into that upper body back bend as much or a little as you want. Inhale to the top, keep those shoulders down, separate and back into mountain pose. Circle your shoulders a couple of times. And relax. Spread your spine apart again. And we'll do our gentle windmill twist, just moving side to side. Take a moment, just breathing and relaxing. See how that spine is working today. Keep the shoulders down, away from your ears. And then back to the center. Spread your feet apart, toes to the front. You're gonna pivot at the hips, so get those thumbs into that hip crease and pull your chest forward. Keep your body as straight as you can. Slide your hands down along your legs toward your ankles and just straighten everything. So you can press your palms into your shins below your knees. And sitting bones and crowns stretch apart. Shoulders back toward your waist. Knees as straight as it feels comfortable. Take a moment and breathe. And then bring your hands down to the floor. We're gonna go into a lunge from here. Yeah, it's weird. So walk your hands while you bend your knee and turn your foot to the side and turn your other foot back so that the heel goes back and the toes are supporting you on the balls of your feet. Bring your hands next to your toes and chest toward the floor. So a little lunge, look forward, and then drop your hip or drop your knee down to the floor and slide your toes back and get that hip opening a little bit. Take a moment and breathe. Slide your foot maybe back a little further. And just let that hip joint, hip flexor stretch, just gently. Take a moment and breathe a little bit more. And then tuck your toes, lift your knee, not your hip, press back through that lunge position. And we're gonna walk the hands back to the center while you turn both feet back into that starting position. Straighten your back. Stretch it out, feel your body. And of course, you know, if you need to bend your knees, you can do that. We're going to do our lunge to the other side. So again, bending your knees, walking your hands, turning your foot and the back foot to coming into that lunge position. Hands on either side of that front foot. Make sure that knee isn't sliding out or in, but right above your ankle. And again, bring your knee down. Slide your toes, get a little stretch on the front of that hip flexor. Maybe slide it a little further back, looking forward, chest to the front, shoulders even, hips sinking toward the floor evenly. And again, tuck the toes under, lift the knee, knock the hip, and walk your hands back to the center, turning the feet. And back in our forward pivot, Bring your hands right under your shoulders. Remember, you can always have 
something under your hands to raise the floor. We're going to go into our twist. So if that works for you with the hands on the floor, you can keep them there. Otherwise, you can bring your hand to your leg as we do this. So right hand on the floor or your leg, left arm out to the side. Look at it. Stretch your spine apart for twisting and turn your body back all the way toward the side as you bring that hand right above you. So the whole spine is turning. Your body is facing sort of to the side as you look up toward that hand in the air. Stretch it apart as much as you'd like through the spine. Take a breath. Exhale, follow that hand back down and either under your shoulder or to your leg because we're going to twist up yeah, to the other side. So hand to the floor, arm out to the opposite side, palm open to the side. And as you turn your whole body, remember you need those sitting bones and crown reaching away so that you've got that spine open for your twist, turning your whole body toward the side. Take a breath. Relax into it as much as you like. And again, follow your hand back down and under your shoulders or to your legs. <clears throat> and then bring your hands to your legs and press again into your shins. Straighten your spine, sitting bones and crown away from each other, legs straight and arms straight. Pivot up, sliding your hands up and step back into mountain pose. As you get back there, tag a moment and just feel what your body is telling you about your process today. Hands to your heart. Look at them and inhale. Hands toward the ceiling. Thumbs coming back, looking at them as you lift your heart. And a nice little back, but remember, don't push your chin too far to the ceiling. Just keep looking at your hands, stretching out through the back of your neck. Exhale, follow your hands to your heart. Give it on over. Into ragdoll. Just hang a moment. Pull in a little deeper if you want to with your hands behind your leg. Get a good stretch on that low back area. And then hands back to the center and slowly roll to mountain pose. As you get all the way back upright, just take a moment feeling your center groundedness, connecting your feet and then bring them toward each other. So toes together, heels can be separated slightly if you want. We're gonna bring the knees toward the second toe, hands above your knees, position, no support, so no pressure in your hands. And then just circle those knees around a few times, getting those ankles, knees, hips working. And then stop and circle the other way. So feel the whole bottoms of your feet working as well. And then come back to the center and find that spot out in the middle of the floor and raise your heels. So come on to the balls of your feet, base of your toes, not the toes themselves. See if you can find your balance. Shoulder, shoulder blades where? Toward your waist. And then just roll back and forth on your feet. With the ankles, arches, toes, everything working all the way up onto your toes. And then come on back up into mountain pose, shoulders down, spine open. And then clasp your hands behind you or reverse prayer with your fingertips up by your shoulder blades so the shoulders get a little more work. Just clasp your forearms on your thighs. Bend your knees and big circles with your hips. Let that middle of your body, hip area, pelvis work out. And then stop and go the other way with your circles. Just giving a gentle stretch through the hips. And back up into mountain pose. Take a moment and breathe. Let those shoulders relax down. Hands just release at your sides. And find your balance foot. Yeah, we need to do some balance. So spread your toes out, lift the toes. Remember, no gripping with the toes. 
So lift the chest, get that ball of your foot, base of the toe area connected. Arch lifting, whole bottom of your foot connecting. Ankle, knee, hip, shoulder line. So remember, roll in if you need to so that that knee goes toward your second toe, not out toward the side or in. Core active, so support your spine. Ribs toward your spine and up, and then bring the other leg up. Remember also, don't let it cross over all the way up straight. So close to the floor or up, wherever's good for you. Pull it in if you like. And then circle your ankle. We want to make sure that we're keeping things flexible. Circle it both ways. Flex and point a few times, and then put it down. Shift what worked, improve the rest. So get those toes spreading out, not gripping. Get that alignment all the way up. Get that core support. Shoulders relaxing always down. And bring the other foot. However far you want. Circle it around. When you get comfortable, circle it the other way. And again, flex and point and straighten it out and release. Hands to your heart, shoulders down, take a breath. Inhale, follow those hands up. Nice little back bend once more and exhale, coming all the way toward the Hang and ragdoll, and then slide up into that halfway up stretch. Hold those knees and spine straight. And then bend your knees, come to the floor for our transition in Chichata's pose. Hips back on your heels, forehead toward the floor, and shoulders down. Bring your knees together if you like it, or separate them for a little release through the hips, and relax. Stretch and breathe. And then inhaling, come on back up and into stack position, bringing your legs out in front for a little outside of your hip warm up. Press out through the bottoms of your feet. Pull the toes back toward you, get a good stretch on the calves on the back of your legs. Kneecaps toward your thighs, and just release that back of your leg down toward the floor. And then bend your right leg, put the foot up on your left side, and let the knee come down. Remember, get those sitting bones behind you for a nice pelvic opening. Have if you need to, or bring this front leg over to the side, or keep the knee and toes up, whatever you're doing. Knee coming down toward the mat, just relaxing. You can put your hands there, but don't press. So weight, not pressure letting that hip release maybe a little further toward the floor when it's ready, but let it have its time. No need to rush or pressure anything. Take a breath, tension out. And then lift your foot on your knee or pull in with your arms around your leg and move your hip rotator. So moving that leg back and forth to get that outside of your hip open as much as it wants to do. And if you find that that's easy and you like it more, you can bring your foot higher or closer. It'll make it more intense, so don't go there if you don't want to. And release that leg. When you do, you'll notice that they feel different on both sides, so we got to balance the body and do the other one. So bring that opposite foot to your thigh, knee coming down toward the floor. Again, keep pressing out through the bottom of your foot. So the heel is going out, but the toes are pulling back. Keep that knee as straight as you can. Bring it over to the side if that helps you get that little release through that hip area as much as you like. Again, weight in your hands, but not pressure. Letting that knee come down toward the floor when it's ready. Not forcing anything. Take a breath. The more you exhale and relax, the more things will release. Let it happen. Breathe deep. And then bring your foot and your knee into your hands or pull your leg in closer if you love it. Move it back and forth for that outside of your hip to get a little warmer. 
personal practice, do as much or little as your body needs. You can make it more intense if you want to or not. It's your choice. And when you're ready to release that way, just again, observe how the hips are feeling as you get into that position. Take a moment and breathe. And let's come up onto your hands and knees. So table position to start, get that spine lifting, supporting your low back with those ribs up and towards your heart. Wrist elbows and shoulders lined up, keeping your body nicely lined up, feet hip width apart, straight back from your knees. We're gonna go into our pigeon to get that hip area working a little bit more. So bring your right knee between your hands and slide your left leg back to open that hip flexor on that leg behind you. And then we're going to work the hip rotator a little bit more. So bring your right knee over to the right side of the mat and then pull your heel up a little further if that works for you. You can bring it as much as perpendicular to your body if that works for your hip and knee, but don't go there if that's not working. Take a breath. Sink down. So get those hip bones even, sinking toward the floor. And just feel that hip flexor, get a good stretch on that back leg, and feel this hip rotator working as much as it wants. You can keep pulling that foot forward if that's helping. Get a little bit more intensity if you love it. And then chest forward and look slightly up, but remember, keep stretching that back of your neck. Or, if that's too much for whatever is going on in your lower body, you can slide your hands forward, coming onto your forearms with your elbows under your shoulders, chest facing the front, and again, hip bones sinking evenly toward the floor. Take a breath. Just let your twist or your pigeon get as intense or not intense as you'd like. And if you really love it and want to be a 19-year-old gymnast cheerleader type, you can bring your, bend your back knee and put your foot and your head toward each other. My body doesn't go there. But maybe yours does. So if that happens, feel free to try that. Chest forward, shoulders down, whatever position you're in. And don't forget to breathe. And then if you're on your forearms, still bring your hands back under your shoulders, pull your front knee back and your back knee up, coming back into table position. And the circle those hips around to release anything that might be tight. Circle the other way as well. And then come back to the center. And of course, we've got two pigeon to the other side. So take your left knee between your thumbs, Slide your right leg back, get that hip starting to open. Exhale and relax. Bring your left knee way over to the outside of your mat and left foot up as much as perpendicular with that shin toward your body. Chest forward and up as you let those hips sink down. Taking a breath, just relaxing as much or as little as your body looks. And again, those of you who want a little bit more, less stress through those hips and knees and things, you can bring your forearms to the floor. Keep the chest forward, keep those hips sinking evenly toward the floor. And don't forget to keep breathing. Shoulder, shoulder blades layer toward your waist, whatever position you're in. Take a breath, just relaxing. Doing what's right for you, bring that chest a little forward and up if that's working for your body. And don't forget, relax. Let it sink, don't force it. But always, the more you breathe out, the more you release the tension, the easier things get. And then pressing into your hands, bring your left knee back up. Hands under your shoulders first if you were on your forehead. Left knee back, right knee up. Again, let's circle through those hips both directions. Just allowing things to release. And then 
Sink back on your heels and bring your legs out in front, all the way to the end of the mat. Press that through the bottoms of your foot. Feel that hip joint releasing as you're in that staff position. Shoulders relaxing, core activated. And before we go down onto the mat, bring your hands behind you under your shoulders with the fingertips facing toward your toes. We're going to press into the hands, straighten your elbows and lift your hips up and see if you can bring the bottoms of your feet toward the floor as you look up. So this is a reverse plank. Get that core activated in the middle, lifting those hips. Getting that hip flexor stretching, bring those toes toward the floor, maybe a little bit more. And as you exhale, just go ahead and slowly lower the hips, release your hands, come back into staff position. Get that core activated, then we're just going to roll slowly onto the mat. Take a moment as you get there, recline integration. Let those shoulders come down. Sitting bones slightly toward your heels. Press that back gently into the mat. And bring your hands to T position, palms up. Of course, we're going to do our bent knee twist in the chiropractic version. So left leg is going to stay straight on the floor. Press the sitting bones slightly toward your heels. Bend your right leg. Foot to the upper left side. We're going to roll all the way to the left side. So remember, keep your head down so you don't strain your neck. Bring your knee all the way to the floor and your hands together in front of you. Get comfortable and bring your left hand onto your right knee. Keep that knee on the floor for that low back twist. Bring your right hand above your shoulder, palm open, right up above your shoulder, lowering it behind you as you look at it coming into the twist. So, hand stays at shoulder level, not down toward your foot or up toward your head, but straight back so that heart area opens nicely. Knee down for that lower back twist as much as your body needs or wants. You can pad if you need to. And don't forget, turn your head and look back so that neck area also gets a little twist, but don't overdo. Always personal practice, only what's right for you. Gravity may bring your hand to the floor, or if it doesn't, just let gravity do the work of releasing that middle back into the twist. Never force it. Just do what's right for your body. Take a breath. Exhale and release. And remember, hold these longer when you have time on your own. But for now, just let go of your knee. Roll onto your back. Slide the foot near the other one so we can twist to the other side. And again, shoulders are down, hands palms up at shoulder level, sitting bones toward your heels, and then left knee bends, foot to the right side. Roll all the way over to the right side, knee down, and hands together, keeping your head on the floor, of course. Hand to your foot, arm right above your shoulder. No, hand to your knee, sorry. And lower that hand as you look at it behind you into your twist. Remember, the more you breathe with these twists, the more the ligaments have an opportunity to release and relax. So let it happen. Knee down as much as you need for your lower back, head turning for your neck and shoulder, and the hand coming toward the floor as far as gravity wants to bring you. And then just relax and let it go further when it's ready. Take a breath or two, just releasing and relaxing into your twist on this side. Exhaling any tension. And of course, when you're ready to release, you just let go of that knee, rolling onto your back. Slide the foot near the other one and come into cut corpse position for your relaxation. Hands, palms up at your sides, shoulders down into that surface beneath you. A little natural curve to your spine, letting it arch up slightly if it wants to. And kind of circle those toes, feet, ankles, and bring the toes slightly together, and then just let your legs relax. 
shoulders down, breath full and deep. Close your eyes and focus inward. Find any tension, maybe in that hip pelvis area. We did a lot of work there. Just let it soften and sink. Exhale any tension. Let your body go deep into that earth embrace. And release thoughts of your body from your attention, letting your body just relax naturally into the earth. And allow any new thoughts coming to you to release from your attention as well. Remember, it's the job of your mind to produce thoughts. It's your choice whether you pay attention. At this moment, just let those thoughts drift in and out as easily as your breath. And as your body softens and sinks, and your mind lightens and floats, just allow your awareness to release both your body and your mind. Allow your attention just to focus inward on that peace within, feeling your attention, feeling your body, feeling your being, feeling your mind, everything filled with peace. And of course, if you have time to keep relaxing today, take as much time as you have. If it's time to get ready for the rest of your day, just begin drawing energy and awareness with the breath back to the moment, to the room, to your body. And as you breathe more fully, just begin moving your body gently, feeling your lungs, stretching your body, moving your feet and ankles and legs and hips. And as you breathe more deeply and stretch more completely when you're ready for that feel the hug of appreciation, move your sitting bones slightly toward your heels, pulling your heels up toward your hips and your knees up toward your head. Wrap your arms around however feels right for you today. And give yourself that appreciative yoga hug. Let your body know you appreciate its yoga work today and the work your body does for you every day. And when you have enough hug and appreciation, release heavy feet to the floor, rolling over to the side, and sit back up, getting ready for whatever's ahead in your world today. Thanks for joining me.